it does seem pretty clear that there that some of the abilities they seem to intend to have a short cooldown. Um, the Druid Gatling Gun ability, whatever that's called, that that doesn't look like it's going to have a short cooldown. It's going to be like a once per fight thing, which will be great, you know, cool, line it up and win. Uh, but I don't think it's going to carry a fight. Um, I don't see these as rotation, um, uh, rotation changing abilities. Now that said, there, there seems to be a few abilities that kind of change that up. Um, there's a rogue one. Uh, for I forget which which covenant now, but one of the ones that was that was a rogue where I talked about it applies like a, a bone debuff, and then the more targets that you apply it to at once, uh, it's going to increase the damage. But if there's like a maximum target, ca uh, a maximum cap to that, it still might not be a huge deal. And for a single target fight, that doesn't seem to be very impactful either. But we still need values. I know that there are people that are like, well, gosh, so you're falling into that whole wait for, you know, wait, it's only alpha, wait, it's only beta, and that sort of stuff. But we don't even have values at all. They purposefully didn't give us any uh, cooldown numbers, nothing like that. So I at least want to have that. We're going to get the alpha, for all I know, it's today. Uh, but we're going to get it in a matter of days. So let's at least give <laughs> Blizzard that much time. Um, before we get, like, really worried. Um, tuning and all that stuff, of course, that's iterative. Uh, it's going to happen over time. Um, but before that, you know, not a big deal. The real conversation that I was going to have, that I want to have, is about choice. And this idea that people don't seem to want to have choices in a while. They want to have the ability to adapt for every situation. They want to have everything at their fingertips. Hence, all the salt over, hey, I want to have all the legendaries so I can play with them. Hey, I want to have all the corruption things so I, so I want to play with them. Now, that's a little bit different because when it comes to especially the legendaries, your event, you were eventually going to get all of them. Um, and it was just a matter of like when you get what and that was really awkward. This is different though. Here you're going to get the full allotment of whatever it is that you're going to get. You just need to make the choice as to which one, um, which of the things that you want to have. And that choice may not be easy. Now, all that said, Blizzard can walk this back and they can say, you know what, fuck it, yeah, fine. Fine, bitches. We'll, <laughs> we'll go ahead and make things talent wide. You guys don't like fun. Okay, get out. Um, and, and that's kind of okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world because people will still be choosing their covenant based on purely their cosmetic choice. That way, the, that way, the idea of choice, um, is much looser. People will feel better about their choice. The thing is though, people shouldn't be, people shouldn't feel bad about their choice either. People shouldn't, just like people shouldn't feel bad about the class that they decide to roll. They shouldn't feel bad about the spec that they choose to play. But what happened, what's happened is that many of us, not all of us, right? Many, uh, many of us have fallen into this trap that if we are not the thing that the website tells us to roll, we're bad and we gotta get out or we're never gonna get groups. Or the people that make these groups are like, oh, Blood Mallet is saying that this is the good thing that person doesn't have the good thing, so I'm not making these choice between the person that made the right decision and the person that made the suboptimal decision. I'm probably going to trust that person that made the right decision. We can think about this differently though, right? We can think of it as, well, you know, that person that chose that other thing, they chose that because they, you know, because that's something that they wanted to have despite what the people, what the machines tell them otherwise. So maybe I'll trust that person more because that person has a fucking mind of their own. Or maybe not, right? Bad players or, you know, people that are, are less skilled or just bad at the game or whatever. It doesn't matter what they what, what spec uh, they chose or what build they, they happen to have. Do they play it well? Do they like it? Are they happy with it? You know, there, there are things that, that we never know that Raider IO isn't going to solve for us. Um, that sometimes you're just gonna have to take the risk and be like, all right, let's come on, friend. Let's give this a go. So, yeah. Competitive WoW, should competitive WoW dictate WoW, right? 
that's uh, you know and and i don't i don't know the i i don't i don't there there's no good answer for that one that's a dangerous thing to answer um and so so that's going to be kind of the question that i'm that that i want to lean towards um by the time i'm done talking about this in some video is to pose that choice should competitive wow you know should, should that sense of competition and a need for balance uh dictate design uh design philosophies in wow because if that were the case you know and and i don't know because if that were the case then we would get these very tooth you know then covenants and whatnot overall would be toothless uh we would definitely go back to a a wow where classes are for the most part homogenized everybody needs to have their certain thing and it just looks cosmetically different that's pretty extreme hyperbolic and all that stuff i don't think anyone really wants something like that but that's what players want players want wow to be more like diablo 3 because they want to be able to change their loadout for whatever situation that they want i'm sorry let me <laughs> let me rephrase that they want to change their loadout for this for the optimal situation that that is uh that, that they either find out figure out or that is uh written for them and it's usually written for them sims and and, and all that stuff um and players just want to follow their you know follow those instructions you know follow that path that the sims or the websites or whatever had laid out for them and i wondered to myself you know uh for, for me at least just speaking for me that's not playing the game uh, for me playing the game is figuring stuff out and experimentation and seeing you know seeing what's fun or feels good and all that uh, when I did the shaman thing, uh, when I did, so I didn't upload it yet, but I completed a five chest of Orgrimmar, um, and I used uh, Reaping Flames. I didn't use the Meme Beam, uh, and, and and many and some of you had rightfully suggested, hey, you know that's really good for AOE and yada yada yada. I hated it. <laughs> I did not have. I didn't feel good with it. Uh, I didn't get a groove with it. I could. It, it felt awkward. And then when I did it on the shaman. I, you know, it was just Orgrimmar, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but I blasted it, I, I won, I got it, and I did, and I got it without too much trouble at all, and that felt good, because this is what I figured out, um, and that's important, to, and that's important to me, it's crazy because, we, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at chat right now, it's crazy because we all live in a different kind, you know, we all play different kinds of World of Warcraft, we all feel differently about certain things, and we all, uh, like having things a certain way and I'm gonna die. We all take the game in in, in, in like different ways um, Should one You know should one philosophy overcome, you know uh, dictate the way um, uh, Dictate how everyone else feels uh, and in this case, it's not exactly um, You know should one school of thought uh, dictate things it's more like should blizzard be allowed to make their own should be blizzard be allowed to design their own game or do they need to constantly cater to this uh competitive crowd i don't know um i think i'm i think i'm putting my foot in my mouth a lot in case i decide you know what, screw it i'll just just take this content here and upload it and just see what people think just to, because i just want to get the conversation going um uh, because I think there's, uh, I, I think there's more to talk about than just, hey, here's the solution, um, which is to just break the original design. I don't know. You're gonna have to overcome those perceptions. Well, this is the this is the good thing, you know. They should they should take that. If you're with guildmates, does it matter? Um, I'm only I, I only do AOTC stuff on heroic, uh, but I'll tell you this, I don't give a shit what uh what people decide to do now now i my 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 raid comp is comprised of people who um either you know optimize and sim and do all that stuff but i also have a a good mix of people that are just like you know i'm just gonna do what what i like i'm one of those people i'll look at sims to find out what's bad so i could be like Ooh, let me try that <laughs> let's see if this is it let's see just how bad this really is um 
You know, and then and, and there are some things that just aren't a good idea that you don't need a sim. You don't need a website to tell you, hey, I should really use this AoE thing on a single target thing because it looks dope. That's probably not the way to go. Um, you know, there are things that you can feel your way through, but it also depends on like if everyone's on the same page. If everyone's cool with it, if everyone's on the same page, then everyone's on the same page. And that's why I'm so thankful for my guild. Um, they, they've altered my perception of how I take in the game. Or actually, did it? Maybe the way that I'm playing the game is like the best way because I could just like to be chill and you know and do the things that I want and ignore the things that I don't want. Uh, but some people are compelled to do 15s, um, and that's okay. They, you know, if they want to challenge themselves. But if they're but if they're do but if they're, go, they're going down the path of Mythic Plus and they're just pugging, um, I would argue that that's not optimal. That that's not the optimal way to progress through Mythic Plus. I would argue that the optimal way is to get a set number of people and just roll with them all the time. That way, when you when you guys decide, hey, you know what, let's try this and this and this, maybe this will be a little bit better, this will feel better, everyone's on the same page, right? Yeah. It's, it's the perception that people will look at, you know, if someone spouts a fact, or if someone spouts knowledge, uh, whether it's coming from a sim or... Uh, you know, Preach says this, or this high-end Mythic person or, or Mythic Plus person says, you know, this is the best thing or whatever. People are going to listen to that. Uh, and, and that kind of trickles down to the non-competitive space. So then you get these mix of people. So then you get a mix of it. And that's where things get especially toxic. Sometimes it's not worth messing. And sometimes like... Uh, you know, sometimes it's worth just kind of venturing out on your own and going on your own little journey of self-discovery. I think that's I think that's a part of the game too. Not just going to the site that tells you what to do and be like, all right, well, I better follow this because otherwise I gotta. I, I, it was the Asmongold quote that kind of got to me, and I'm gonna be using that in the video. I think I'll be using it in the video, where he says, you know, uh, I won't, we should be able to sw uh, swap out our covenant abilities because otherwise uh, we can't get into groups and I think that's not cool I don't think we should discriminate just because oh well they chose that and clearly that's going to be like an 8% DPS loss um, according to the sims and they and this is this is something where people will probably look at the sims uh, I, I made a joke saying that oh you know what it'd be funny if um, Raider IO could like subtract from your score based on <laughs> the covenant that you chose. Oh man, that'd be fucked up. I I, play, I feel like I play in this weird bubble. We're outside of this bubble. It's it, it's like you know, you need to have a, a high IO score in order to get into Mythic Plus groups, uh, or you need to have a lot of gold so that you can buy your way into getting carries. So that way you can get. Uh, so that way you can get your IO score up, so you can actually make groups on your own um, without having to worry about being ostracized like that. That sucks, man. I feel bad for those people that, that are stuck in that game, and some people that are listening or watching right now, you guys might be stuck in that. And I feel kind of bad. I can tell you right now that I'm not going to give one flying fuck what anybody chooses in my guild. They can choose whatever the hell they want. Um, and I will not notice. I will look at their transmog and be like, dude, that's awful. Look at me, dude, I'm naked. I look so good. <laughs> and that'll be, that'll be my focus, right? I'm going to try and pull something up. Hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Yeah, so on that note, obviously, most of my questions are about the top end. <laughs> sure, we would yep. go. I'm shocked. What steps are you taking <laughs> to avoid people feeling pigeonholed into certain covenants? Here like we, we saw with yeah. Aldor and Scryer, yes. and even Lower City, where you focused that reputation. Totally. Because I, I felt like you were announcing TBC, actually, mostly. <laughs> um, obviously, we look at things and go, well, that was just so much better. We all have to go more if there is one, mm -hmm. or Bastion or whatever. So, I think... We're definitely mindful of the fact that when it comes down to a simple choice, there's going to be a mathematical right answer. As well as we might want to balance a talent row, there's going to be the one that sims best, or certainly for a specific encounter, is the right answer there. 
Or I do think we actually can attain fuzzier choices is where it's a lot of options, a bucket of many choices together. Like, which is better, this talent or that talent? That's answerable. Which is better, mage or warlock? It depends. I know sometimes someone might argue that there's a specific answer to that question, but broadly, if someone asks you what class you should play, it really does depend. They have strengths and weaknesses. And when a covenant is the sum of a range of perks, a couple of active abilities, soul binds, which each have their own traits within them that are tunable, we feel confident that we can get to a point where there isn't a clear cut right answer where it's like, oh, if you're a warrior, if you don't pick Venthyr, you're screwing up. Now, in a specific situation, is there likely to be a good answer there? Yes. But broadly, we want to make sure that no one feels like they made a clear right or wrong choice. That's and I know that's easier said than done. Yeah. So that is pretty much it. Like, like, like that's that, that's like the sum of, of, of the response that I have to that. I mean, yeah, it comes down to like a whole, oh, let's wait and, you know, let's take a wait and see approach. Uh, I know when you, I know that... We, People prefer to take to take a wait and see approach. Um, I don't buy into that either. I think we just try to give feedback earlier rather than later. But at the same time, there's so little to go on uh, that we can't really judge a covenant based on its cover, right? Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, there are clearly lots of changes that, that are going to be coming in. Paladins have already been changed. No more fan of shields. Okay, well, okay, kind of fan, fan of shields. Cleave of shields, I think, is, is something that I had said. Um, but we're just getting started. Actually, <laughs> we're not, we haven't even got started yet. Uh, it's going to be a long and it's going to be a long roller coaster, folks. Uh, strap in because we're going to be met with all sorts of we're going to be met with like a whole slew of emotions as we go through this whole iterative process um, and so I encourage concern um, I discourage um, the kind of feedback that asserts you know what forget the design it's not going to work um, I see that as letting your cynicism get the better of you and I know that the cynicism isn't coming from nowhere either um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I, I do believe that there should be like a, you know a, a little bit of flexibility to let to let a couple dudes or you know a couple hundred dudes and do that to make their game and then present to us uh, what they've got in other words just give us some you know at least wait for the damn alpha to start um, so we can like see these values. I want to give Blizzard props, and I'll do this in the weekly. I want to give them props for trying to get ahead of, um, try to get ahead of the conversation. Uh, and I think they have, because this is the conversation that they themselves started. It's not, hey, let's react to this data mining stuff that we're seeing and seeing all these values and, and yada 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 no this is something that blizzard purposely you know put out on their own so that they can try to you know kind of control the kind of control the conversation um so props to them for that one uh, but i want to see more they get they they didn't give us uh cooldown values or numbers or any of that for a reason um because i think that uh they, they're just trying to drive the point that they're just getting started 